Hello, second graders. Welcome to day 34. You guys, it's Thursday, May 7th. Hope you guys are having a great day so far. Today we do have reading, writing, and math. Today um, it's lots of things that we've talked about and one new thing that um, for math we have not done before and I'm really excited about it. So for reading today, you're going to choose one 20 minute activity. However, I would highly recommend you read Tommy Goes to the Caribbean or the Caribbean. I'm never quite sure how to say that word um, because hopefully you've been reading a few Tommy books so far and you've gotten to know Tommy really well because whenever we come over for our reading response today, you'll see it's about character traits. Remember, character traits are words we would use to describe our character's personality. So the more books you read about a character, the more that you get to know that character, the easier it is to find those character traits. So for today, go ahead and read Tommy Goes to the Caribbean or another fiction um, story, maybe in a series, so you get to know the character really well. And then you are going to complete this chart here. You're going to create it in your notebook and you are going to write character, trait, and evidence. So if I were to do this on, let's say, Mercy Watson. So for the character I'd put maybe who I could pick from a few, Eugenia, how about that? Remember grumpy Eugenia? So Eugenia, a trait of hers, her personality is that she's grumpy. She doesn't just feel grumpy once in a while, she's grumpy like most of the story. So that's kind of her personality. Evidence would be that she yells at everybody a lot. So maybe I could say on page, I don't have the book in front of me, but like on page 12, Eugenia yells at Mercy. She does this more than once in the story. And once you've done maybe like two or three character trait rows, so there's these two, maybe add one more, and you're going to rewrite them as sentences underneath. So here where I put Eugenia is grumpy, because, and I know it in the story, she um, yells at Mercy a lot. I could say, Eugenia is grumpy, period. In the story, she yells at Mercy Watson a lot, period. Don't forget about the capital letters at the beginning and period at the end. This is good practice for that. So whenever you're finished with this, you can go back and read if you didn't get to read the full 20 minutes. I always love that. Read, 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 I say. And then um, whenever you're, I'm going to let you go ahead and get started on that. And whenever you're done with that, come on back for math. All right, second graders, welcome back for math. Today we are doing bar graphs. Now, I think you did these in first grade a little bit, and so it's kind of continuing what you've learned, but also getting to new, use it in a new way. So you're going to watch this video about bar graphs on Brain Pop Junior. You do not have to log in for this. Should be good to go. And it really explains everything you need to know about creating a bar graph. You might have to go back and rewatch it, and that's okay. But you're going to, today, be using this data to create a bar graph. You'll see it's about favorite TV shows, uh, animals, sports, cartoons, and news, and you have the votes for that. So go ahead and watch this video first, and then come back and you'll see what to do with this data. All right, so for this, you are going to be using everything you know about bar graphs to create a bar graph from this data in your notebook. Or if you can come up with your own survey question, something you wanna ask in 10 people or around 10, then you can do that. But if you don't have around 10 people to ask, go ahead and use this data, because if you only have two or three people to ask, that's not going to be enough. <laughs> so do that in your notebook. If you need some help, ask mom or dad to help you. I let them know you might need some help if you're doing this activity on your own, and that is totally okay. So go ahead and get started on that if that's what you're doing. If you're doing Envision, Envision gives you a good opportunity today to kind of ease into it a little bit. So the first thing let's do is the guided practice. You'll see here there's this table of data. They have a bar graph they've mostly made for you, and they've even sketched out the labels here, so the labels, the numbers, and the title. So go ahead and trace those before you even start, then look over here and figure out how do I show how many people voted for dog and a bird and a turtle? Now, you'll see for cat, they colored, started at the zero. When we go down, we can see that zero. They went to the one, they went to the two, three, four. And what I like to do is before I even colored in, I'm gonna draw a line here 
So whenever I start coloring it in, I don't accidentally just keep on going because I'm excited and make a mistake. So I'm gonna mark my four, color it in, and then I'm gonna go to my dog. So dogs have six votes, so you're gonna do this with me, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. Even though it's at the end, I'm gonna just put a little line here. And I'm gonna color it in. For the bird, go ahead and do this on your paper too as we go. And if you need to pause me, you can pause me and then catch up. For the bird, I see two people voted, so I'm gonna start at zero and I'm gonna count one, two, make a little line, color it in. And then for turtle, I have three votes. So one, two, three, a line, color it in. How many students chose a cat? So you're gonna count for this one, and you'll see there's four. How many students chose bird or dog? So you might have to add some numbers together on this one. When you come down here, the graph is already made for you. You're using it to solve the problems. Some of them will be right there. How many students write after school? That's one. Some of them, like number four, you might have to subtract. How many fewer students, or if you see more, you might have to subtract two because they're comparison problems. Sometimes you'll have to add how many students read or draw after school. So some of them will be right there, some you might need to subtract, and some you might need to add. So just be thinking carefully about that. And then when you come down here, you're going to be creating your own bar graph totally on your own. Don't forget about what a title would be for this graph. Okay, you can make up your own. And then the labels here, right here. And then think about what are these things? When I go up to my label here, I see there's cat, dog, bird, turtle, but pet is the label because they're all pets. So whenever I fill these in, I'm gonna look at what they all are and add a label that makes sense. And then here, number of students is what it was here. Um, and then you are going to come down here and it wouldn't probably be number of students, it might be a different label. Add the numbers here and add your label and then you can fill it in. It takes some time, but hopefully through practicing with this and looking at your data here, you can fill this one out. I'm really excited for you guys to try this today. Please do send me your math for today on Google Classroom if you're on Google Classroom. If not, have your parents send me a picture. And then for fluency today, you're going to be doing subtraction stacks with someone or you can do fact monster on your own. Either is fine with me. And that's it for today. I'm excited to see your bar graphs. Um, I'm so sad we can't do bar graphs as a class because there's so many fun things we can do with it, but that's okay. No worries. I love seeing you guys do this at home. It kind of gives me a sneak peek into your, um, your lives at home, which I don't get to see during the school year. So I consider this a great opportunity. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, I am going to be I'm not going to be posting anything. Actually, let me start talk about that. I'm not going to be posting anything for day 35 because it's just a STEAM activity is what it is. So you're going to be coming on here. I will put it on Google Classroom just like this for you. Um, and then you are going to click here to view the choice board and activities where you can click on things. So here you can just click through it, okay? So that's how that works. And if you have any questions about this, have your parents email me, but really today is a fun day, enjoy it. If something's not quite working, just pick something else. We can be problem solvers, we always are. So that's it for today and Friday. I'm uh, excited to see what you guys do. If you find any fun activities here and your parents take a video on Friday, have them send it to me if they can or any pictures. I love to see what you guys are doing. So have a great Thursday and a great Friday. Again, I'll post this on Friday, but there won't be a video, so you won't hear from me, but you will hear from me in our Zoom meeting on Friday at one o'clock if you can join. So have a great day and I'll talk to you guys on Friday.